Well, hello Richard. Hi. Now, it's a lovely day today here at Congeny. I was just wondering, you're the faci facilitator here at Congeny. Yep. And um, can you give the audience a bit of an idea of what it entails, you know, the things that you do, what makes the week, as you might say? Yeah. I, um, I got interested in QVA because I came on a working retreat like this one two years ago and um, I thought hey this combination um, is just what I need um, in a way there's three parts to us we've got we've got the head lots of thinking uh, the heart and the Quaker way is is the way of the heart and the body and I thought the Quakers are pretty good when it comes to the heart and um, they're pretty clever as well mm. uh, but there's not a lot of reference to the body mm. um, and yet it's starting to be interested people are starting to ask questions there's a book by young friends uh, I think called Spirit Rising and there's a chapter in there called an article in there called Bring Your Body to Worship mm -hmm. so I thought well look QVA does this because in a working retreat you're working with your body, mm -hmm. you're working with your thinking and your feelings. Mm -hmm. uh, because there's not only work sessions, but I mean physical work sessions, but there is also... I was just going to say, so basically the theme of the week is basically body awareness. Well, that's what you say, that, that's the main flow of the week. Well, we started yesterday, if you remember, with a theme of, I know, with the theme of being present in the body while you're working. Uh, today we moved on to our power of attention right. and collecting our attention every hour. So, as you know, um, there's a church, church bells which ring every hour, but in this particular village, um, in case you don't hear them the first time, mm. there's a gap of two minutes and then they ring again. And so it's perfect, a little reminding factor, mm -hmm. to come back to your body, mm -hmm. to come back to the present moment mm -hmm. and to be uh, in possession of your attention instead of letting it be used all the you time. You mean a kind of an awareness? An, uh, awareness. an increased awareness. So can I just make a point? So what you do is to stop whatever you're doing. Yeah. On the, on the striking of the village clock, yeah. and you stand still, all of you, whatever, or sit, or sit whatever yeah. you're engaged in, and you're perfectly still. Yeah. And this it gives them an increased body awareness, you think? The body awareness is just a means right. of actually collecting, pulling yourself together, mm -hmm. someone said, um, collecting your attention. Mm -hmm to just being more aware of being here now. Mm -hmm. Here of the here and now. Yeah. Sounds a bit like Buddhism. Yeah. So, and how do you start the day to help with this body awareness? Well, Is there any sort of we started this morning, mm -hmm. as you know, because we did... Well, I joined in, yeah. yeah. We did Tai Chi, um, and that's just a gentle way of um, being a little bit more conscious of simple movements. Mm -hmm. And then the... Um, we then have breakfast together um, and relax um, and then we go into the work session mm -hmm. uh, with a theme. We have a meeting for worship before that, um, have a work session and that uh, lasts until one o'clock when we have a good meal because we have some of our team uh, in the kitchen um, with different teams each day. Different, different jobs are allocated yep. to different people. Can I just clarify, how long is the work session for? How, how, work session how, how much do, of the day yeah. is you know, the, which one is involved it? in the work? The, the practical, Janet. physical work mm. begins about half past nine. Mm -hmm. um, we have a bit of a break for a cup of tea, coffee at 11, mm -hmm. and goes on till one o'clock. So it's about four hours, yeah. Yeah. say. And so then in the afternoon, it's free. Mm -hmm and um, it's good to rest mm -hmm. and then at 5.30 we have what's called a retreat session mm -hmm. and the retreat session 
this year are based on the theme of sustainability. Sustainability. The future of our planet Earth and the human species and all the other animals and which is very plants. Important. And um, as you remember, um, on the first day we had sharing of difficult feelings about the future. Mm -hmm. And there was a wide range of feeling of despair mm -hmm. and of hope. Mm -hmm. But I think what came through was the importance of being together. Mm -hmm. um, the importance of the Society of Friends, uh, the importance of community. Mm -hmm. And so that's the second reason I really like QVA, because it builds community. And it's therapeutic in a way. Isn't yeah. It, don't you think? I would love each area meeting mm -hmm. to have a QVA mm -hmm. group. Mm -hmm. And if they don't have work to do on the meeting house or in the meeting house garden, there are elderly people as part of the meeting who would love um, a group of friends to I'm go sure. and do their garden. I'm sure they Paint their kitchen, yeah. etc. Yeah. So we have them in different parts of the world, is that right? Yeah, apparently. Yeah. So there's actually Svartbarden, Svartbarden, I think, in Sweden, which I, I, I attended, Northern Ireland, yeah. uh, the Netherlands. Yeah. So it's quite, a, it's quite a thing which goes on through the year. Yeah. And I think the, possibly the high point mm -hmm. is the course in Ramallah. Oh, Ramallah, of course. In, in Palestine. Yeah, in Palestine. Um, which I is quite a year. But the people who have been on that course uh, say it's really a life changer. I believe so. Mm. I believe so. And that's twice a year, by the way. I believe. And let's also remember Swarthmore Hall yep. in uh, England, which is twice a year. Mm. So that basically, it's about 12 uh, retreats a year. Mm. Mm. So, good. yeah, it's, good. It's, 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 quite a, it's quite a good thing that's yeah. been going on, I think, for about five years. Would you like to refresh your just no, notes fine. there? Is that it? Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks a lot, then. Mm. Great. Thanks, Richard. Very interesting. Are we all right? Joe, sure, I wonder if you could tell us a little about your experience in Palestine, your, your QVA retreat. It would be nice to hear. I went on the QVA retreat in uh, September 2010, and one of the places that we visited in Palestine was the Ramallah Quaker School, which made a great impression on us. The maturity and, and political know-how of the pupils was quite astonishing. I think it put us to shame, rather. And as a result, we arranged, when I got back to Reading with two of the others who were there, we arranged a visit from pupils from Ramallah and a, a teacher to come over to Reading and spend some time with us last summer, which was a very successful mm. um, enterprise and a, a good spin-off from our visit. Very interesting. And Keith, we've done a couple of uh, retreats together. I, I know you went to Palestine, didn't you? Mm. When was that? 2010? That was 2010, the same time as Joe. That's right. right. So how was it for you? Then? It was an amazing experience. Um, we met up with some of the Israeli peace groups that were working to promote relations with the Palestinian people. And we went to a settlement on the West Bank and we met um, a family. Uh, family there mm -hmm. and of course that was a very very different perspective to the one that the peace groups had mm -hmm. but then we went on to the into the West Bank and we stayed with the family there and we met different people there and they made us so welcome and we went into the market and they just when they realized where we were from they just gave us fruit I mean can you imagine that happening mm -hmm. in this country mm -hmm. and everywhere there they were just so welcoming, so friendly, but above all they were wanting just to tell us about the situation that they're in. The situation is so desperate because everywhere the Israeli military presence is felt. Well, we did also pick lots of olives. We helped out That's three right. different families with olive picking which was wonderful. It was, some, it was a lovely thing to be doing in the shade of the olive trees, but with lots of people to talk to. Although the families that we picked olives for weren't always able to understand English, and this, of course, was another minus for us that we couldn't do, uh, do much Arabic. But, and we did have some good cons consultations, and, and they taught us a lot, didn't they? We went to people's homes because they gave us the most wonderful meals. 
when we pick their olives. Mm. And yes. the reason we were picking the olives is because often the people there in their olive trees, they just can't pick them for fear of the settlers mm. there. Mm. would just come down and abuse them, might even use violence. Mm. So having outsiders there just makes them feel a bit more protected and mm. a bit safer. Well, it sounds a very interesting experience you both had. Thanks very much for that. Thank you. Thank you. Great.